So the Ottoman Empire, may Allah reward them, did an amazing job in establishing Islam. However, it wasn't just this. Many of us already know about this. We know that they conquered Constantinople. But as I said, there's much that we don't know. For example, many of us aren't aware of the time that Muhammad al-Fatih, rahimahullah, fought against Dracula. You've heard of Dracula before? When I say Dracula, you're probably thinking of a vampire. You're saying, yeah, Musa. You're telling me that Muhammad al-Fatih fought a vampire? What's next? He fought Superman? No. Dracula was a real man. There was a real man named Dracula. And he ruled over the southern part of the country of what we call today Romania. Now, Muhammad al-Fatih, as he began to advance into Eastern Europe, for example, Bosnia, Serbia, Hungary, all of these lands, the people of Wallachia, of southern Romania, they wanted to fight against the Ottomans. However, they were very weak, and so they had to make a peace deal with him. So as part of this peace deal, Muhammad al-Fatih, he said to the ruler, he said, you have to send me two of your sons, and we will send them to Istanbul to be educated. So he sent his two sons, one was named Vlad, and one was named Radu. Now Vlad is the one who we know as Dracula, because the word Dracula, it means son of Dracul, which was the name of his father. Dracul, it means shaitan, it means a devil. So he's the son of shaitan, and this is actually quite relevant. It's rather fitting when you hear about this man. What happened was, they went to Constantinople, they studied about Islam, and his brother actually became Muslim. So the brother of Dracula, Radu, became a Muslim. He memorized the Qur'an, he studied so much, and even Dracula. Dracula studied the Qur'an even though he wasn't a Muslim. He spoke Arabic, he spoke Persian, he spoke Turkish, and of course Romanian and other languages. And later on, he was sent back to his country, where Radu remained, and he became the ruler of his country. Because the Ottomans realized they can't send a Muslim to rule over the country because they're Christians. They wanted to send Vlad, Dracula, so that they could get, get him there and then defeat him in a war and they would rule the country. However, Dracula, he decided that he wasn't going to do what the Sultan wanted. The Sultan sent him two emissaries, two people to come speak with him, and they said to him, you must pay us the jizya. Now that you're the ruler of the country, you have to pay us jizya. And so Dracula, he said to them, if you want to step inside of my court, you have to take off your turban. And so they said, no, we won't remove it for you. We're not going to remove it for a kafir. So he said, take it off. And again, they refused. So he commanded, he told someone to come with some very big nails and hammers. And he said, if they refuse to remove it for me, then they will never remove it again. And he commanded that their turbans be nailed into their heads. And of course, this in effect killed them. So this was an act of war. Dracula had decided that he wanted to go to war with the Islamic State. And so Muhammad al-Fatih, rahimahullah, he sent a massive army to go fight against them. But Dracula, because of his tactics and the fact that he knew the Ottomans very well, he was able to defeat them on some occasions. Now what he did, is what really makes him stand out as being an absolute devil. Dracula, what he did, is when they would kill a person, or sometimes they wouldn't even kill him, they would capture them, he did something which is called impaling. Now, if you haven't heard of impaling, it's a pretty gruesome thing to start to describe. What they would do is they would get a very, very big stick. They'd make it sharp at one end, they would insert it through your backsides, pass it through your body until it comes out of your mouth. They would impale them, they would pass this through their body. A lot of the time they would be alive as well. And this is how they would kill them. And then they would put this in the grounds, then impale the next person, put him next to him. And the Ottoman army, when they went to go check on their troops, they found that on one of the very long roads leading to the capital of this area, they found 20,000 Muslims impaled along the sides of this road. Imagine this. And if we suffer today, no doubt we suffer as Muslims today. But things like this, you can't really compare. 20,000 of them impaled. You can imagine how Muhammad al-Fatih, rahim Allah, he feels. To see even one Muslim killed is too much. But to mutilate their bodies after this, this was something which was, you know, beyond what was acceptable. And so he decided to send Radu, who was the brother of Dracula. He sent him to go fight against his own brother. And eventually Radu, 
Rahim, uh, Rahimahullah, he was able to actually eventually catch up with his brother. This is after he commits so many more atrocities. Even the Christians, they started to back off from him. Because what happened was he, being Romanian, he was uh, Orthodox, he wasn't Catholic. But he actually said to the Pope, he said, if you give me some more troops, I'll become a Catholic for you. Anything you want, I'll change my religion for you. He couldn't care. He wasn't a man of true belief. He was only a man of pragmatism on the battlefield. And so even the Christians started to distance themselves from him. However, the Muslims, they caught up with him and they faced him in battle. And it's unclear if the Muslims killed him or if his own people turned upon him and killed him. But either way, Dracula was killed. And the Ottomans, the Muslim army, defeated Dracula. And so what they did was they removed his heads and they took it to the city of Istanbul and they put it on a very, very large stick. They impaled his head and put it at the gates of Constantinople where it stood for about two, three months to say, if you want to be like this man, wage war against us. This was the demise of Dracula. And again, as Muslims, most of us won't even know about this. How many people know that Dracula was a real man? And we as Muslims, we fought him and we killed him. You know how they say garlic kills Dracula or a silver bullet to the heart or a wooden stake? None of these kill Dracula. Muslims kill Dracula. So anyone who wants to follow the way of Dracula, they will face the same wrath from the Muslim Ummah.